Our Heavenly Father, we pray now that you will receive glory out of our gathering together. We thank you for the opportunity. Bless thy word as it goes forth each night. Bless thy people as they hear it. And may the great Holy Ghost take a hold of the word that falls into the heart and make it to manifest itself that literally hundreds of people through the country here may be saved. Hundreds of them that are suffering, laying in the shadows of death, may see a great light spring up and may they be healed. And thy great name honored, that's why we're here, Lord. It's not for honor for ourselves, but to honor Jesus Christ among us. For we ask it in his name. Amen. Now, as you get into your Bible just for a few moments, and each night now, I'll just speak about 20 to 30 minutes. I have been for the last few weeks. And uh, just to speak a very few minutes. And then we'll call prayer line, pray for the sick, or whatever the Holy Spirit leads. And how many will, your first time comers tonight, and all of you together, will pray for the meeting. Will you do that? We're not here just, we're, we're here because we're trying to help. Brother, I believe the Lord help us. We have a great being to honor our Lord and Savior. We believe He's coming right away. If He isn't here tonight, I'll be looking for Him in the morning. If He isn't here by tomorrow night, I'll be here, the Lord willing. And then if He isn't here, I'll look for Him tomorrow night. And then if He isn't here, I'll look for Him the next night. I want to, I've been looking for Him for 33 years now. Big part of my life. And I'm not discouraged. I'm watching day by day and hour by hour for Him to appear. Now, as we turn in the Bible, in the book of, of St. Luke, the 24th chapter, beginning with the 13th verse, let us stand in honor of the word while we read. St. Luke 24, beginning with the 13th verse. Now, if somebody have your Bibles, some of them likes to keep the minister's uh, text where he speaks from. And now, um, I want you to listen close, read with me if you can, to yourself. While we read. And behold, two of them went the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. And they walked together all of these things which had happened. I beg your pardon. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said to them, What manner of communications are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? And the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? And has not known the things which are come to pass in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people. Now the chief priests and the rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that he had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels which said... That he was alive, and certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre, and found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. Then said, then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things, and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village where they went. And he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, 
for it is towards evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it, and brake it, and gave to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened unto us the scripture? And they arose and went the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the leaven gathered together and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and has appeared unto Simon. And they told what things were done in the way and how he was known to them by breaking a bread. Let us bow our heads. Lord Jesus, we pray that you will make yourself known to us in like manner tonight. As we wait upon thee, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Be seated. For a subject from that, I would like to take these words. When their eyes were open, they knew him. Now, we're speaking, of course, of the resurrection, which is believed amongst all Christian believers today. It's the hope of the church. If Christ did not rise, then we're lost. And Christianity is based upon resurrection. Now, not replacement. Resurrection. For instance, this motel key here. If I drop that on the floor and said, well, I dropped it, I'll place another and like it here. That isn't resurrection. That's replacement. See, resurrection is bring up the same thing that went down. And God raised him up on the third day and we believe that with all of our heart. And we believe the Bible story. And notice on this first Easter morning, Jesus is alive among them from among the dead. What a beautiful thing. How I'm so glad tonight with, to punctuate that with an amen that I believe he's still alive among us. In the springtime uh, of the glorious gospel of Christ. I believe he's still alive. I believe that that's been a, that was a springtime of the resurrection. Also of life of man. Man had always feared death. They had no assurance of ever coming back again after dying. But seeing him die at Calvary, then being raised up again and was with them, walking among them on this glorious day. After the heartaches and sorrows and so forth that they went through in them dark hours of seeing him crucified and spit on and made fun of. And all that he went through in those three and a half years and them closing hours of darkness and made him, those Pharisees, they hated him anyhow, and they was rejoicing because they thought they had finished it, and here he appears among them. My, what a day. I'd, would you like to tuck a trip with Cleopas and them on the road to Emmaus? I'd like to walk with them, and it's possible, I'm glad to be a living today, that I can still do the same thing. Walk with him today just the same as they did then. The th- thought of it was how that Jesus had raised up from the dead, but the sad part of us, some of them who loved him didn't know it. And that's certainly a picture of today. There's many people who love him who doesn't yet realize that he is alive. It's some kind of a history that they have learned in some school. It's some book of theology, some ethics, uh, code of ethics that they've studied somewhere. And Jesus is a historical figure to them. And yet in the history they love him and don't realize that he's alive with us. Walking right around with us just as he always did. He's here just the same as as he ever was. Now, uh, the reason they, why didn't they believe it is because the resurrection was too unusual. See, there was, that hadn't happened before. So it was an unusual thing for them uh, to believe something like that. And the unusualness is where God lays. See, Christ's birth was unusual. A virgin shall conceive. God's always unusual. He does unusual things. But it's always according to His Word. 
He never does nothing outside of his word. So unusual because he promises it first and then sends somebody to manifest that word to make it real to people. When you Pentecostal people first received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that was an unusual thing. But yet God promised it, poured out in the last days, and here it was. So no matter how unusual it was, it was a promise of God that had to be made manifest because God promised it. Now, the resurrection was unusual to many of his, the people that loved him, yet it was a promised word, but too unusual to believe. Divine healing today is, a, is so unusual to people till they don't want to believe it, and yet it's a promised word. This thing that we're seeing taking place today is a promise of God, but it's so unusual to the mind who has never thought of it in that way. That's the way the resurrection was to many people who loved him. There were people who honored him and believed him to be a prophet and of God and, and believed him to be the son of God and so forth. But still, they, they, the, the resurrection was too much for them to believe. It was too phenomenal. And you take anything that's really way out in a phenomenon like that, always check it with the word. If the word promised it, then it's only God rising on the scene again. That's the way ever the promise is, and that's the way they should have seen it then, because God promised he'd raise him up the third day. David said, I will not leave his soul in hell, and neither I'll suffer my Holy One see corruption. Jesus said, destroy this body, and I'll raise it up again in three days. Yes. See, it was a promise, and it was a phenomena, very unusual, and many who loved him could not understand it, because it was his staggering to the whole world. For a man who had been crucified and a sword run through his heart or spirit, every drop of blood in his body had dwindled out upon the cross and had tucked him and sealed him in the tomb and rolled a rock over it, taking a century of man to handle that, seal it with a Roman seal, and then to say an angel come down and broke the seal and rolled away the rock, and here he is alive among us. It was kind of a strange thing. And today it's the same kind of phenomena when people think he died to settle it. 1900 years ago and here he is today after 1900 years still on us just as much as he was then just as real as he was then doing the same things he did then it's too much of a phenomena that people can't understand it it goes beyond their reasoning certainly who can reason God no one can reason God no one can interpret God God's his own interpreter God speaks the word and they say, well, you got the wrong interpretation. God makes it come to pass. That's the interpretation. Amen. Don't need anybody to interpret him. I just spoke on that in the city below here. God said, let there be light. And there was light. They don't need any interpretation. There was light. God said, a virgin shall conceive. She did. That settles it. So when he, he speaks anything and then he, he's his own interpreter. He doesn't need our interpretation of it. The Bible said that the scriptures have no private interpretation. It's God himself doing the interpretation of it. Notice, many didn't see it because they hadn't searched the scriptures. They hadn't listened to what he said. Many today hasn't listened to the message. Hasn't listened to the scripture. What Christ promised in these last days. That's the reason that, that people are in a condition they are today and the churches are all gummed up among one another. They haven't noticed what the scripture said for this day. They didn't notice these things had to be done. It's just a fulfilling of the scripture. Many people love him. Many people believe in him. But yet it's too phenomenal. They can't understand it. When you talk about him to being just as same as he was yesterday, doing the same things, they claim they believe that. But when it takes place, then they don't understand it. They, they just can't believe it. Notice, they were talking of him when he appeared. Now, that's a good thing we notice here in the scripture. It says, and while they uh, talked of him, while they spoke of these things, going along talking about him sad, while well, they find out that he appeared. And when he appeared, he appeared unto them while they were going along reasoning about him. That's when he always appears, is when we talk about him. Always through the scripture. It's when the people talk about God. That's when he appeared. Now we're too busy talking about other things. I think that's the reason many people who love him fail to see him. We're so busy with our creeds and denominations and business about the churches and memberships and getting more members and things. We're too busy to talk about him. He's the word. We're too interested in what the, some creed, some textbook or something else says. How many members can we get in? Vote them in. Shall we take this one, that one, the other? We should be constantly giving ourselves to the word of God in prayer. Studying the word. But we're too interested in something else. 
These people were sad. They were talking a great thing had happened. He would have been taken away. But they were talking about him, and there he appeared. And when he appeared, he was a stranger to them. They didn't understand it. First, he re- first we find out that he was as they walk on on the road down to a little city of Emmaus, just a few mile or two down there, Sabbath day's journey or something. The first he revealed the promised scripture of himself to them for that day. Amen. Now notice when Jesus comes on the scene. If we want to see him and talk with him after his resurrection like they did, like they saw him, the first thing he did to them was reveal himself to them by the scripture. Amen. 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 That's to make it what? They were Hebrews. They believed the word. Yeah. And they, he, he revealed himself, revealed the written word yeah. of himself, yeah. what he was supposed to do for that age. Amen. Amen. Each God in Genesis and in before the foundation of the world, he lauded it. And he spoke it and said what would take place down from the beginning, beginning to the end. Always the churches get that all scrupled up and they get out and man has to inject what they believe about it. And this is just, well, I believe a little different than that. And he makes him something. And this has got to do something. Each one's got a tower city or something that they've got to build. Always trying to add something or do something. Uh, say that we did this. Oh, that's the way you get confused. Get out of the picture. Amen. Let God do it. Amen. See, here's His Word, what He said He would do. Each age, He sends a prophet on there with anointed. The Word of the Lord comes to the prophet always to vindicate it in the age. John the Baptist came on the scene. He was a prophet for that time. He was a light of the age. Because the prophet Malachi spoke of Him coming. I'll send my messenger before my face. Isaiah 712 years before that said, A voice of one will cry in the wilderness. Behold us, what he would do in the last days, make straight the path in the wilderness. And all these things is prophesied of him. When he come on the scene, he was the prophet to manifest that promise. Jesus is the word. And the word always comes to the prophet. And you remember when this prophet was prophesying, making straight the path. And then when the word was on earth, the word walked right out into the water and come to the prophet. Amen. How perfect! The Word comes to the prophet, and he was the Word. For in the beginning was the Word, and the Word is with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. No wonder he said, It's behooving to us that we fulfill all righteousness. The Word came to the prophet in the water to fulfill all righteousness. And we find out then that he revealed himself to Cleopas and his friend here. It's unknown by name, the other party, but it was Cleopas, we know. And he revealed himself to them by the Scripture. Notice how he, he said, notice, they, they called him a prophet. Know not these things? Jesus of Nazareth, a prophet. Uh, God manifested himself to him, see? Which before all the people and so forth, he was called a prophet. Then if they had recognized the one they were talking about of being a prophet, looked like they would have seen right here that same prophet picked up the word again and began to reveal it, which he was the word, and was revealing himself by mouth the word that was written of him. And he began and started from Moses and explained to them all that the prophets had said about him. Oh my! How he made it up for that age. Fool, slow of heart, know that Moses and all the prophets said that Christ must suffer and enter into his glory. See, and for that age, that's what was supposed to take place. Don't you know he's supposed to do that? See, revealing the written word of him, that's the way Christ always does it. God never changes his program. The way he does it the first time, that's the way he does it every time. He made a decision in the Garden of Eden when man was lost to save him by shed blood. That's the only place he'd ever meet a man. That's the only place he's ever met a man since. Yes. It's under the shed blood. Amen. We've tried to educate him. We've built towers. We've built cities. We've built everything else trying to get people together. We tried to take education and run them together. We tried to take military power and run them together. We tried denominations to run them together. It's all failed. God's got one place that's under the blood. Amen. Under the blood he'll meet man. They're blood-born brothers. I hope I'm not blasting at you out there with this 
but it sounds like it's a rebound if it is. Can you hear me all right if you can't raise your hands? All right. Now, just so I know what you're getting this, you must. Notice, now, when he said, still they fail to know him by the written word. Think of that. When he come and revealed himself by the word to them, and they still fail to see it. If that ain't a picture today, I don't know what is. Still failing when the scripture says these things. It shall come to pass in the last day, saith God. I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy upon my hands, made as a maid servant. Well, I'll pour out of my spirit in that day. I'll show wonders in the heavens above and fire and smoke and so forth. Still they don't see him. Yeah. Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. to be eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage. As it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. All these things they have spoke of. And the word preached from the platform and still many that love him don't see him. They still grope on into darkness. Still they fail to know him by the written word. They take seminaries and go off and misconstrue it and everything and bring it back. And they don't know what in the world to, to believe. One says it's this way and one says it's that way. So just the written word. Jesus never told them to go into all the world and teach. He said go into all the world and preach the gospel. A lot of different guys teaching something and preaching something. Preach is to make manifest it. You'd have to do it. Demonstrate the power of the Holy Ghost. These signs shall follow them that believe. It takes the Holy Ghost to manifest that word. If it's a truth word, God will manifest it. If it isn't truth, God won't have nothing to do with it. Because God won't entangle himself with lies, as you know that. Because he's God. Now, same now. They claim that they had believed and they were his disciples. They loved him. They believed it. And he was standing right with them, interpreting the word to who he was. And still they didn't know it. Just think of that. They didn't know it. And him standing there himself, written in the scripture, it goes back and picks up the scripture, been written for hundreds of years concerning him, and telling how he must do and all these things like that, and walk around and say, you don't say so. Well, what do you know? And him, him doing the talking. And they still didn't recognize it. What a picture of this day. Same now. They claim they believe that he had raised from the dead, but when he appears to show himself... They still don't believe it. Right. Yet they claim they believe it. Oh, yes, we believe he rose the third day. Let him do something to show he raised the third day. Oh, I don't believe in that. See, there you are, the same thing. Notice. He said, fools and slow of heart to understand the scripture promise for this age. Fools. Said, oh, he's gone. They crucified him and we understood he rose again. But oh my, that's just a mystery story that somebody said. We didn't know nothing about it. Oh, I'm telling you, it's the most miserable thing. He said, you fools and slow of heart to understand what the scripture has said for this age. Amen. There you are. I wish I could blast that to the ecumenical council. Yes, sir. Slow of heart. Knowing the scripture says these things, still don't understand it. There you are. He said, fools and slow of heart to understand the scripture that's been prophesied for that day and just exactly how it would happen. And here it's happened. Christ entered into his glory by suffering first, being buried, died, rose again the third day. Didn't That's the way the scripture said he was to do it. Raised up on the third day. He said, this is the third day since it's happened. He said, well, that's what I'm trying to tell you. And still they didn't understand it. Then he said, you're fools and slow at heart to understand all that the prophets have said. And the scripture has been said about this day. And here it's happened right before you and you don't know it. They said, well, what do you know? See, their eyes are blind. You say, could it be blind in this day? Yes, sir. It's as blind this day as it was then. Right. Didn't the Bible say that he had a high-minded lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God? Truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, and despisers of those that are good. Having a form of godliness, but would deny the power thereof, the power of the resurrection and the manifestation of the Son of God. The Bible said it would happen. So it's got to happen. Just as he said, Isaiah spoke and said, you've got eyes and can't see and ears and can't hear. The same God said the same scripture. We notice then, Paul the great revelation he had of Jesus Christ, who he was. It was so great to know what well, God put it in the Bible. That's how great it was. That's the reason he's given a thorn in the flesh to keep him down so it wouldn't get big and exalted. God kept him down small so he could use him in different parts of the country, do for him what he wanted to because he had the revelation of Jesus Christ, who he was. Then, 
Notice, here's the thing to do. Next thing we find out, they invited him to come in. He got to the little place, the little inn where they were going to stay. It was towards evening and they said, Oh, come and abide with us. He made out like he was going on past. Oh, I thought that many times. He's only wanting you to invite him. He made out like he had passed him on by. He might make out like he's going to pass you by, sister, in the wheelchair. Or you, sir, in the cop. Or you out there with a heart trouble that can't live but just a little while longer. These people are perhaps crippled. They might live an ordinary lifetime. But somebody out there with heart trouble might die before morning. Might die before tomorrow. He might act like he's going to pass you by, but he's only wanting you to invite him in. He might think, well, he healed so and so the other day. He last month, I know, two years ago, I seen. Yeah, he might act like he's going to pass you by, but he's only wanting you to in, to invite him. He makes out like he's going to pass. What he was then, he is today. What he does then, he does today. He said so. Notice. You must do the same thing. You've got to invite him in. It was then and only then that he could reveal himself. He couldn't do it by preaching them the word. It went over the top of their head. Him walking last saying, Well, you ought to know they're you fools, slow of heart. The Bible said these things, that Christ must do these things, and so forth. Walk on that will look like they'd have seen that's who it was. He never come right out and told him, I'm he. You get a guy who does that, then you know there's nothing to him to begin with. But he just let the Holy Spirit reveal it. He told us, he told the Pharisees, he said, search the scriptures. In them you think you have eternal life, and they are they that testify of me. They tell you who I am. They should know it. Start to know the day that there's not a big bunch of racket or a fuss or a carry on or a lot of noise. It's Jesus Christ manifested among these people. The scripture says so. Notice now, and that makes it true when God says so. We find out the only way that he can reveal is to come into you. He is, he can, he is the word. And the word in you, then the Holy Spirit reveals Christ through the word after he gets in you. He is in you. You must take his word. Say, well, my church don't believe that. All right, he'll never get in. See, when you refuse the word, you're refusing him. Well, my church believes in doing it this way. But the Bible says do it this way. This is the way. Take it like it's written there. Not what somebody else has added to it. What God said about it. And then he can reveal it to you. But he's got to get into you first. Then and then only can he reveal it. Don't stand and look at it and try to figure it out like the Pharisees said. They stood and looked at him there and said, This man's Beelzebub. They couldn't figure it out. They had to give it a name. They said, This man does this by the spirit of the devil. He's, he's a Beelzebub, a fortune teller. Well, I don't have nothing to do with this fellow. He's born in sin. He don't have our fellowship cards. He doesn't belong to us. And Oh, my, the, we don't even know where he went to school. He has no education. Why? Well, where did this man come from? Now he says the son of man that's going to send up and send it down his barn right here. He's crazy. Unless you eat the flesh of the son of man, drink his blood, he's a cannibal. And he did that just to make them say those things. Yeah. They had to do it. And so is the Holy Ghost today. Putting forth his word in manifestation that man might condemn it. That God might put his judgment upon the earth as he promised he would. Yeah. He hardened the heart of Pharaoh. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He changes not. He's God. His system shows himself mighty with his word to manifest it. He don't have to tell you all about it. You don't have to figure it out. You can't figure out God. You've got to accept it. Just invite him in and see what happens. Now, we notice again how he made himself known to them after he got in. How did he do it? He opened their eyes to who he was. When he got into them, then he opened their eyes to see. Now, when the word comes into you, when you accept God's word and it comes into you, then the promise of that promise that you've accepted manifests itself. And then you know who it is. But what did he do? How did he make himself known to them? Because he did the same things that he did before his crucifixion. Then they know that that was him because he had raised from the dead. All the preaching, all the teaching, and everything else he had done had failed. But when he revealed himself doing the same thing he did before his crucifixion, they knew it was him. Amen. It opened their eyes. Brother, sister, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He changes not. 
Just as he did the woman at the well. See, he never changes his program. Now, this little woman at the well, she knew the scripture promise for that day. Notice when he comes to the little woman at the well, he said, uh, that's like he said, a woman bring me a drink. She said, well, it's not customary of you Jews to ask us Samaritans such as that. He said, but if you knew who you were speaking to, you'd ask me for a drink. Well, then she thought some smart aleck, so I'll just question him a little bit. She said, but question Right after he said, go get your husband and come here. She said, I don't have a husband. He said, that's right. You've had five, and the one you're living with now is not your husband. Watch quickly. What did it do? It got in. Quickly. She knows something. She said, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Amen. See, there was a seed laying there to come to life. There was a switch there that would turn on light. To them Pharisees, it was darkness to begin with. No switch, no batteries, no nothing else. But to this man, this woman, little prostitute, she said, Sir, why? She was looking for the manifestation of the Word. Yes. Four hundred years since Malachi, that had no prophets. And here was a man that manifested to be a prophet. Quickly, she knew that was something. She said, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. She said, we know that when the Messiah cometh, that's going to be what he does. He said, I'm he that speaks to you. Now he can reveal himself. Yes. She's already received him. He's on the inside now. See, he can make himself known. That's how he made himself known to the world. Woman, why? She believed the promised word. Yes. And when she seen the promised word manifested. Now we know in Deuteronomy 18th chapter, 15th verse. Moses said, the Lord your God shall raise up a prophet like unto me. And she knew that that Messiah was going to be a prophet. And the last prophet had ceased many, many years before that. There had been no prophets. And here stood one. Yeah. What was it? It was the next thing in line. Right. Amen. That was a word. What did he do? He revealed it to her by telling her, revealing it. He was that prophet by revealing her what she had done. Oh, my. That settled it. She left that water pot and ran into a city and said, You come see a man who told me the things that I've done. Isn't this the very Messiah? Stop her. Well, you couldn't do it. It was like trying to put a fire out on a windy day and a dry house on fire. Yes, sir. It was burning and blazing. God had struck something home. She seen something. She knew it was the truth. The word had been made manifest before her. Just exactly like it was to the disciples later on. See, when he's trying to show them the word and then manifest it to her. And here she knew the word and when she seen it manifested, that did it. One day a man named Andrew, I've been watching John, listening to him, speaking of a coming Messiah. Peter was his brother, wasn't interested. They had a godly old father that had taught them. Now, son, we've trusted God for everything we need. Days when our bills couldn't be paid, we prayed God to give us a catch of fishes today. we go out and God would give us that catch of fishes. And when we got that catch of fish, what would we do? We'd come in and give God praise for it and sell our fishes. We trusted God. I'm an old man now. I probably won't see the coming Messiah. But watch, before he comes, there will be a lot of false manifestation. And the Bible said there was. Yes. False Christ raised up. It's true. What was it doing? Trying to put out the light of that real one coming. Yes. See? We've had many cults, clans, and everything else rise up and take you over to Canada and stick you in a shelter somewhere up some other place and lead a bunch off this way and that way just exactly repeating itself again. Yeah. What's it trying to do? What is it trying to do? It's trying to shut the light of the truth out. Yeah. Now we notice, then one day Peter came out on the banks to do some fishing and washing his nets and Jesus came down. And the first thing we know that as soon as he come up in the Side of where Peter was, he was well instructed what that Messiah would do. His old father said to him, said, Now, Simon, the scripture says, you're, you remember, you're a Jew. The Lord has told us that there be one among us who's spiritual or prophet. Ah, the Lord will speak to him. And if he, what he says is the truth, manifested the truth, and what he says constantly comes to pass, then you know he has the divine revelation of the scripture. Now, you know the Messiah when you see him. So he walked out up in the face of Jesus one day. He thought I'd go see what Andrew was talking about. And as soon as he got to him, he said, Your name is Simon, and you're the son of Jonas. Yeah, that settled it. Yeah, that settled it. Yeah, 
For he was taught in there that he would be a prophet. He knew it. There was another little scholar who had been teaching when Philip was standing there watching that things go on. He took around the mountain real quick. He got another man by the name of Nathaniel who had been a Bible student, a studier. that studied the scriptures because they know the time was at hand. They were looking for him to come. That's who he comes to, to those who are looking for him. And we find out today, he's not coming to those who's not looking for him. There's no such a thing as divine healing to those who don't believe in it. There's no such a thing as the baptism of the Holy Ghost to them who don't believe in it. It's just for those who believe it. That's right. That's all. So then we find out, those who are longing to know the truth, God's obligated to reveal the truth. He says his word, then comes and fulfills it, gives his own interpretation. How we find out, as soon as that little woman, she said, she just couldn't understand how this man was getting smart with her. She said, um, about giving her a drink, she said, um, or bringing him a drink, and trying to act smart. And the first thing you know, why she got to talking to him to come to find out, she said, we know the Messiah's coming, and when he comes, he'll tell us these things. He said, I am he that speaks to you. Then her eyes come open. Her eyes was open what by? The scripture promise. Her eyes were opened by the scripture promise. Peter knew that his father told him that that Messiah would be a prophet. And here John told her. Andrew told him about a prophet. John was down there prophesying and so forth, telling something would happen. So one day he went out and went after Jesus come. When he come into his presence, he said, Thou art Simon. You're the son of Jonas. What was it? His eyes was open. <laughs> he knew it. Philip and, and Nathaniel had been studying the scripture about him coming. He come, said, come see who I found. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Always oh, said nothing good could come out of Nazareth. said, you come see him. And around the mountain they went. No doubt but what they rehearsed. Many things that Jesus had been doing. What he had said to Simon. What he had did. These things he had did. As soon as Philip walked up into his presence with Nathaniel, Jesus looked over to Nathaniel and said, Behold an Israelite in whom there is no guile. He said, Rabbi, when did you know me? He said, Before Philip called you, when you were under the tree, I saw you. His eyes come open. Amen. He said, Thou art the Son of God. Thou art the King of Israel. Amen. How was it? He's seen the promised word of that day revealed. Amen. Listen, brother, sister. The promised word can be promised to you and you can see it's the hour for that. But when God reveals it, interprets it, then it's sinful to turn it away. Don't you never do that. God opened his eyes by showing him the manifested word that he had promised that it would take place. Now... Always does that the same way he does it. He never changes his system in doing it. Notice, remember, always the same. He promised the scriptures for each and every age. And when he manifests that scripture promise for that age, the people who get their eyes open to see it are the one who receives it. Yeah. Now, Brother Branham, you say it's getting late now. What do you go to say now? What is the scripture promise for this age? Mm. So we can know what we're talking about. Yeah. What are we here for tonight? What good does it do? Are we living near something? Do we really believe it? Amen. Have we testified in vain? Do we say we believe He's coming? Do we believe His visible presence? Do we believe that He's coming the second time? Or are we just making ourselves being fools? Or do we truly believe it? Let's search the Scriptures then and see what's promised for this day. Then we see like the woman at the well, Philip and the rest of them, we can see. Remember Hebrews 13, 8 said, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Is that right? Amen. He promised that. That's a scripture. St. John 14, 12 said, He that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also. I'm backgrounding something. Now, in Joel 2, 28 and 2, 28 30 and on down, he promised, he said, what the palm or worm left, the caterpillar eating, what the caterpillar left, the so and so eating. Each one of those insects is the same insect, it's changed its, its nature. The palm or worm is a caterpillar and so forth. It's in different stages of its journey. And it's just eating and eating and eating and eat that tree of God right on down to a stump. Then would that tree ever live again? But it was looked a hopeless case. But God said, I will restore, saith the Lord. Amen. All the years the caterpillars eating the palm of worms, what they eat off, I'll bring it back in its power again. Amen. What the Lutherans left, the Methodists eating, what the Methodists left, the Pentecostal eating, what the Pentecostal left, so and so eating, just on down, on down, on down. One with this, 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 one with this. Fade out into just a bunch of isms. Yes. Right. 
We know that's the truth. Amen. I stand between you and love you. But remember, in Malachi 4, not Malachi 3, now Malachi 4, God promised to send the anointing again and restore the faith of the children back to the fathers again. Hallelujah. It's exactly what God promised you. Yes. How will it be done? We find out that Jesus said in Luke 17, 26 to 30, he said in 27, uh, Luke 17, he said, As it was in the days of Noah, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, and knew it not until Noah entered into it. So will it be in the coming of the Son of Man. But he said also, As it was in the days of Lot. Did you ever go back? I wish we had time to go back and just reveal that. Go back in Genesis. That's the same book Jesus was reading. Yes. That's the one he was revealed, talking about. Go back there. Look at this. He said, And the sons of man, the sons of God, taken unto them the daughters of man. Women. The original translation of the Hebrew there says it was women, taking women. See, unto them. Just look today. Look at the married given in marriage. And knew it not until... Look here. Look at England, this great disgrace. Look here in the United States. Look at prostitution. Look at everything. It's almost like the comedian said the other night that women has got their clothes so tied up on them, so immorally. When they walk down the street, the next thing they'll be is have a spray job. They won't have to use clothes. It's just about the truth. Look at them, how they go around, how immoral and dirty and filthy. They go, you take, tell a joke said among the man and something or like that. And said, the only way you can tell, they dress like a man and a man dressed like a woman. You hardly cut their hair the same. Same only way you can tell one another. If you tell a dirty joke, a man will blush. Woman won. Then the daughters of Zion walk haughty in the last days. They fail to walk after the Lord. No matter what you say to them, you can just preach and preach and preach. It's like hitting against that wall there. It's a dense darkness up on them. There's no, seems to be so hard to find a genuine man that's man and to find a woman that's really a lady. Look up on the streets today and on our screens and wherever it is, these uncensored program, cigarettes smoking, cussing, carrying on, dressing like men and things. Jesus said those things to be. And they're here. They don't even know Revealing, they are already revealed. Now watch. He said as it was in the days of Lot. Look at the setting of Lot. God come down. And the two men went down into Sodom and preached down in Sodom. One man stood up there with Abraham, the elected church type of the Pentecostal called out today. Not in Sodom out there. Those who live among Pentecostals and women who cut their hair and men who carry on like that and tell those dirty jokes and carry on, they're not Pentecostals. They're just carrying a name Pentecostal. They're not Pentecostals. Genuine Pentecostal ladies are ladies. Genuine Pentecostal men are men. The school's almost having to close for young boys being perverts and things like that in the school. Homosexuals all over everywhere. It's just a sickening sight. Yes. As it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Yes. Remember, notice right down that 30th verse, when the Son of Man will be revealed. Yes. Did you ever notice that? Watch yes. that 30th verse. When the Son of Man will be revealed in the days like it was before Sodom. Yes. Watch what happened to Sodom. This man stayed back. Two of them went on down talked to, to a lot to get him out of there. And they did, they did no more miracles. They just smote him blind. But this night here done a miracle before the elect. He had his back turned to Sarah. And she was in the, the tent behind him. He said, where is Sarah, thy wife, since she's in the tent behind you? Remember, he called her Sarah. I called him Abraham. The day before that, he was Abram and she was Sarah, not Sarah. And notice, he said, she's in the tent behind you. He said, I'm going to visit you. What was it? God in flesh. Yes. I'm going to visit you according to the promise. And Sarah laughed and said, these things can't be so. He said, why did Sarah laugh? Saying these things can't be. Told her what she was doing. Him being the word in human flesh. Know the secrets of her heart. And said, you did that. Yes. And when he was made flesh on earth, that's exactly what he done. Yes. And what did he say? When the Son of Man is revealed in the last days. Yes. Like it was in the days of Sodom. If Sodom I show over the country, the whole world's messed and gone, and we see the church gone, then it's time that the Son of Man reveals Himself. The same yesterday, today, and forever. That's the promise of God. Watch what He said a little while the world sees me no more. Yet ye shall see me, for I will be with you even in yet. 
you'll see me the believer. Same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes, a little while the world sees me no more. It can't see him. Their eyes are blind. But when you see the Son of Man revealed, the Word come back in human flesh. Yes. A man that eat the flesh of a calf, drink the milk from a cow, eat cakes that was made on the earth, and was called Elohim. Amen. Amen. A man with dusty clothes on. God manifested in flesh. Yes. There he was on earth. Manifested in the flesh and said, as it was in the days of Sodom, when the Son of Man is being revealed in the last days, the world would be in a solid condition. And here it is. Brother, sister, ladies and gentlemen, whatever you might be, this is the hour and the interpretation belongs to God. May God open our blind eyes to a scripture. Oh, that we're living in the last days. Amen. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, so much could be said. That's enough. I'll stop, Lord God, who made the promise. Come on the scene, Lord. Reveal it. Our flesh is no good. Our flesh is weak. It is, it's poorly, Lord. It's not that there be anybody worthy. We're not worthy, Lord. But you promised it. And the hour is here. The word stands before us. Walk down with us, Lord, tonight and do something like you did it when he was back there on earth 2,000 years ago that this church might know tonight that you live forevermore. That you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And a promise the works that you did would be repeated again. The Son of Man would be revealed in the last days as it was at Sodom. Lord, you never mentioned that about Lot, about the Noah. You never mentioned it to be revealed at Noah's time, but said, as it was at Sodom, when the Son of Man is revealed. Oh, can, Lord, let Bible readers here tonight see that truth. Let them see that Malachi 4, that this anointing is supposed to come. And to restore back again that faith that the fathers once seen the revelation of God in Christ. Now may they see the revelation of God in human beings. Christ manifested in the flesh of His church, walking among us. Grant it, Lord, the promises you made and the promises you'll keep. And I commit myself with the word, with the church, with all to you now in Jesus Christ's name. With our heads bowed, would there be some here before we have the prayer line would say, Brother Branham, I, I'm not a Christian. I, 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 I want to be saved. Pray for me. Will you, Brother Branham, just raise up your hand. I'll do it. If you're just here and not a Christian, God bless you, sir. God bless you, young man. God bless you, sir. That's good. Just, uh, God bless you, lady. God bless you, lady. That's good. God bless you. That's right. God bless you back there, sir. God bless you. That's good. Someone else? Just raise your hand and say, I'm not a Christian. God bless you. I've seen you back there, young man. God bless you. Way back there. Way over here in the corner. Yes. God bless you. I'm not a Christian, Brother Brandon. But I do believe that you're telling the truth. I believe it's the truth. I believe that the promise says that I have read. And I see that the promise promised that. I've never seen it, but I, I, I believe it. God bless you, young lady. That's another. When you raise your arm, that does something to you. It certainly does. It gives you a feeling that you've done something that's right. Ain't a person put up their hands. I see you way back in the back, yes. Ain't a person that put up their hands. But God bless you. I see you there again. You here, yes. My, that's good. And remember, if I miss seeing your hand, he'll see you. He knows all about it. Remember, he knows. God bless you, young sister. He knows it. Our Heavenly Father, they're yours now. They couldn't have raised that hand. There's something told them to do. Yet maybe none of them has ever seen the visible, outstanding signs of your presence here on earth in the last days. But they see it here. The Scripture said so. And may they understand tonight that even the Bible has been preached for all these years and still people disbelieve. But when you got Cleopas and his friend and then turned and did something just the way you did it when you were alive on earth before the crucifixion, they knew that was the same Jesus. Now, Lord, do the same for us tonight. Do it tonight for these sick people just like you did before your crucifixion. Then after 2,000 years, men and women will know that if you live. We wait upon thee, Father. Through Jesus' name, amen.
Now, to you that raise your hands, I want you to sit real reverent for a few minutes. I'm going to call a prayer line. I don't say that God will do it, but I want to ask you a solid question, people. As there's oh, several hundred here, or five or six hundred, or whatever it is. Look, that's, that's a whole lot of people. But look, I want to ask you something. We're responsible to God. We are. And He's responsible for His Word. Yes. Now, if He makes that Word live again, you, 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 I want everyone to raise your hand, and you that didn't raise your hand, immediately afterwards come here and stand at the altar. Just as soon as we pray for the sick. Where's Billy? Did prayer card D oh, 100 alright let's we're in a hurry so we just start with number one prayer card D number one who's got it raise up your hand look in your prayer card see what it is if you can't walk why some of you get down there so you, D number one two three four five stand up right here if you will one two three if you can't walk raise your hand and we're, they'll pack you one two I only see one so far would you come quickly just as quick as you can one two three four five if somebody would speak it in Spanish, I see as many Spanish people. D, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Or at least three. One, two, three, four. There's another one. Number five. Who has prayer card number five? Raise up your hand, somebody. How would you say it in Spanish? Is that prayer card number five, sir? Huh? Number cinco. Huh? De numero cinco. Very okay, got it. Thank you. One, two, three, four. Then what? Which is missing? Is there five there? Yes. Yeah, I see now. I didn't see you saying All right, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Six. De siete, ocho, nueve, diez. That's ten, three, seven. Six, seven, seven, eight. That's it. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Once, doce, trece, catorce, quince. That's good. That's good. Just a minute. Let's call a few more. Um, Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. One to twenty. That's good enough. Let's start right there. Thank you, brother. How many here doesn't have a prayer card? Raise your hands and get your sick. I remember you don't have to be up here. You don't have to be here. Just believe. I'll let everyone be real ever. I'm going to ask in Jesus' name that nobody stirs for the next about 10 minutes. 15 anyhow. 10 or 15 minutes. Just Let's, let's, let's give God that, that great respect. Everybody settle right down. Let's get real quiet now. Just a moment, they'll have the line here. Now, all you, they're waiting there. Listen close to me now. Now, do you realize where I'm standing here? How many understands what I've preached about? And I claim that he's raised from the dead. Now, if he is raised from the dead, he promised to do this. Now, it hasn't been in any year since the apostles. Until this time, as far as we know. But he promised it this time. The Son of Man would be revealed. Like it was at Sodom. Now you read that Luke 17, uh, about uh, 20 to 30, and see if that isn't right. He promised it. Read Malachi 4. Don't mix it with Malachi 3 now. Malachi 3 was John the Baptist. But Malachi 4, as soon as this was over the wicked, the righteous walked over the wicked, and the world was burnt with fire. It never happened in the days of John's time. We're expecting that great anointing upon the church that will turn the hearts back to the original doctrine of the fathers. Back to the real, genuine Pentecost. All right. Be reverend. Billy, call her Susie. Get them all lined up. Man. All right. All ready? Okay. Now, real reverend. Somebody's going to help off your own side. Now, if everybody be real quiet, just a few minutes. I want you to make me a promise. I promise God that, I, that He knows my heart. And he knows yours. Now, I'm only obligated to say this what's truth. That's all I'm obligated to do. God wrote it. I know they, they, it isn't me. It's the Bible, you know. Now, if he will reveal that, won't that bring him right here alive among us? Yes. What if you didn't have a sense of sight? Nobody did. And you'd walk out into the sunshine. Sometimes you wouldn't know where he's walking because you're blind. And you walk in the sunshine, you feel real something around you, real warm. And that's why you walk into a shade. You said, "Isn't there now?" Nobody never knew what sun was. Never had that sense of sight. You wouldn't know what it was. Somebody said, "That's the sunlight." What is sunlight? What is light? What is the sun? See, you never heard of it. See? Well, it's a light that comes down. What is a light? See, and that's why we feel the presence of God. Then if we don't feel it, then we're walking out. See, if you're in a, a dimension that you see, you can say what it is. 
See? You know what that is. Now, if God is raised up from the dead and is here tonight, Amen. He promised it. Amen. Now, His corporal body sits on the throne of God. He took, sat down on the throne of God. But the Holy Spirit is here, which is Christ in spirit form. The word Christ means the anointed one. And that anointing was up on Him is up on the church. Amen. Now it just kept coming from justification, sanctification, baptism, the Holy Ghost, restoration of the gifts, right down to the top of it. Right? It's coming in a minority all the time. It's together now. And now there's a church, and now a bride will come out of the church. And the church goes through the tribulation here, not bride. Excuse me, I wasn't preaching on the tree. Sorry. All right. This is the lady coming here. Precious. Notice, I don't believe there's a person in here that I know that I'm looking at. If ever one of you here is strangers to me, raise up your hands. You know I know nothing about you, so if the people are strangers in here, now please, please don't move around. Sit still, man. All that's in the prayer line that doesn't know me and know I don't know nothing about you, raise up your hands. There we are. Now here sits a group of ministers. See, it's just right out here where we all look. See? Now, this lady here is a stranger to me. Now, everyone who's on that that engineer watched that mic. All right. Now, I'm going to talk to her. Here, here comes back St. John 4, where Jesus talked to a woman and told her what her trouble was. And she believed that was a sign of the Messiah. If that was the sign of Messiah, then it's still a sign of Messiah because he's the same yesterday day and forever. Is that right? Met like this. Now, I'm not Jesus. And no doubt this woman here isn't that type of woman. But what I'm trying to say, it's the same. Here's a man meets a woman and then something wrong there. And if something will come in here to reveal it, that shows it has to be God. Now, I don't know because I've I never seen a woman in my life. See? And she raised up her hands and I didn't know her. And she don't know me and here we just stand here. Now, I just want to talk to you. Maybe you've been speaking like that preaching, sister. If that's just a, see, one is a preaching, another is anointing and something else. Now, if the Lord Jesus could explain to me or show me by vision uh, something that you want, something that maybe it might be sickness, it might be financial, it might be domestic, it might be for somebody else, I don't even know because so you don't have any idea. But if he would tell me something, it's, it's wrong or something's wrong in your life or, or something that you're terribly sick or somebody else is sick or something's wrong, if he'd tell it, you know what is truth or not. You, you can say what's truth or not. But if he knows what has been, then he certainly knows what will be. He can tell past, he can tell present and future. Now, would it make you believe with all your heart that you would get what you're asking for? Would it make the audience believe that they would get what you're asking for? I'd be referring. I just have to wait and see, see what he'd tell me. Because I don't know. I just... Uh, Meeting after meeting, you get nervous, you know, and preaching and hurrying up and watching this and watching promise. And I get you out here at nine thirty. It's nearly that time now. It makes me nervous, so I just have to quiet myself. See, so a gift is not something like you take a knife and chop something. That isn't a gift. A gift is to get yourself out of the way, so the Holy Spirit can use. And that's the only thing I have to do is get William Brown from from the scene. See, so God can come on now. I, in the name of Jesus Christ, I take every spirit in you under my control for His glory, that the words that I have preached might be manifested. Be sure not. I, I wish I could tell you how that is. My, my. If you'd tell me that tomorrow morning you'd go to the presidential graveyard and raise up George Washington, I'd take come watch it. Just what he'd say now. I don't know what he'd say. But what he says, it'll be truth. A lady's suffering with trouble with her eyes. She's got trouble with her eyes. It's bothering her. She's got back trouble. It's bothering her. She's nervous, extremely nervous. Isn't that right? If that's right, raise up your hand. Say another thing. You are a minister of some sort. You're like a woman. You're a woman preacher. That's what it is. Now, you believe with all your heart. Go and you have what you have. You believe it? Amen. Come, sir. We are strangers to one another, I suppose. The Lord knows both of us. You believe that God can tell me that that was a woman, it was a man. You believe that God can tell me what's your trouble? Would it cause you to believe? 
You suffer with the nervousness. You've also got trouble with your eyes. You're going dimmer all the time. You've been doing that for some time. Another thing, I see something over your arm. Oh, it's you have high blood pressure. That's what it is. You got high blood pressure. That's right, isn't it? I raise up your hand and things are right. Praise the Lord. more you talk to him, more it would be. See? Oh, watch. You know, watch, just take your hand down. We have got too many there. Just take your hand. Now, I don't know what I said to you, but it's on the record there, see? That's how it's on the table. I don't know what he said. Well, let's see now. Yes, it's, it's eyes. That's for one thing. And then another thing, you got a blood clot, and that's on the brain, and you've had a stroke. That is true. What, do you believe now? You believe you're going to be all right? You believe that's God talking, not me? All right, then go we'll believe it. That's all you have to do. You can just believe that's all. How do you do? You believe that God can reveal to me your trouble? And if He can, will it make you believe you? It will. What you scared about? Can't tell, can you? Like, this is got this nervousness. And then another thing, you've got trouble in your neck. Yes. That's right, your trouble's in your neck. And then you've got somebody on your heart that you're praying for. You're having a lot of trouble with it. Yes. And that's over alcohol. Yes. It's your husband. Yes. He's an alcoholic. Yes. And you're praying for him. Yes. You believe for him? Yes, I do. Then I pray that Jesus Christ will do these things. Amen. You believe? Now, that practically, right, those two, three or four, whatever's went by, that's as much as Jesus did in the entire Bible. Yeah. Huh? He done it to that woman, told that woman that one thing, and he went out and signed her. He never said one more thing to anybody down there. But they believe because of a woman's testimony. They don't, don't have to come testify to you. You stand right here looking at yourself. Hallelujah. You just must believe. Of course, some wouldn't believe. There's nothing in them to believe with. Right. How do you do? Uh, we're strange. Wouldn't I be a terrible person standing here with a lovely, gray-headed woman like that and think of the things that my own precious mother who had been about that age and she just passed on here a couple of years ago and if anything I do to help that poor lady, I'd do it. I know if, if, if she's sick, if I could take it and push a coin with my nose around this city, I'd do it. I don't care who laughed at me. I, I want her to get well. If I could help her, I'd do so. But well, I can't help you. And much as he did, God already did that. And he loves you more than I do. He died for you, and I never did that. But he loves you enough to die for you. But then he sent me back. Just a little gift. He sent your pastor here and pray and lay hands on the sick. And you see, that's been done so much in the revival. That's kind of in the past, you know, and now it's up in some other, you know, I mean, the bracket, something else. Now, if the Lord will reveal me, what's your trouble? You believe it to be his prophet or his servant? You believe it, it's him? You, you will. Uh, thank you, sister. Now, I believe that kid in trouble you've been suffering with. Believe me. You believe that too? You've got a request in your heart you want to ask me. What if I reveal that request before you ask me? Would you make you believe more? You want me to pray for your daughter? She's not here. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. What does the word of God see these ministers don't say this? The Bible said in Hebrews, New Testament, fourth chapter, the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. How do you say? Even the fire of the bone and a discerner of the thoughts, this of the heart. Is that right, brother? Amen. See? What is it? It's the word lauded for this day. The word lauded for this day, fulfilling this promise. When the Son of Man shall be revealed, the days of Sodom, all these other things promised. Here it is. It's the word of God being revealed. Because it's the word itself discerning the thoughts that's in the heart. Right. Eh? It's exactly right. Now, this lady, I know her not. Another kind of person. What would I be an awful person? I could help him. Just a moment. Somebody else, it was a man. It was a man who appeared and somebody out there praying. Just half faith. Uh, I was 
see, I, it's, I just have to say what I'm looking at. See, that's all I can say is what I'm, what I'm seeing. You are, um, yes, you're suffering with a stomach condition. It's in your stomach. Then you want to ask me to request. And that's for your mother. She isn't here, but she's sick. You want me to pray for her, isn't that right? You've got another request. It's for it's somebody that's not here. It's a way away from here. Not say it's ways. It's in another country. It's way away from here, and it's a it's a young person, a child suffering with some kind of a disease, tropical disease, South America. That's exactly it's only that's exactly the truth. Right. But believe with all your heart. I don't believe. He's already healed. Did you realize that's his presence? For me? I think it just keep going on and on. That's beginning to blind me a little. See, you say that one, the brother, sister, Jesus, a woman touched his garment. He turned around, seen what it was, and he said, "Virtue went from me." Is that right? Well, he was. Yeah, that was God. What about me, a sinner? You must believe. Don't doubt. Believe. Um, this is. Uh, you believe, young woman. You believe that God can reveal to me what your trouble is. What, would you would you accept it and believe it with all your you know it'd be true if it is. Now, the one thing is your trouble is in your back. You have a back trouble, and then you have a great desire in your heart for something, and that is you are seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Right or right. You believe it? Well you're going to receive it. That more you believe it with all your heart. And you'll receive it. You believe God can heal that heart and mind to make you well? I just keep on walking and thank you. You just keep on. All right, sir. Would you come, lady, just as you're saying? Do you believe with all your heart? I That's the way. And you will have all your heart as you will be careful with this for you. That lady's trouble stops all the time. Go thank you, Lord. I said, say praise be. All right. All right. Now you believe, sitting there, lady. Do you believe? All right, sir. Now that lady's trouble, you've had female trouble for a long time. Just believe with all your heart and go and you'll get, you'll get well and you won't have it no more. If you don't believe. You've got to believe it. All right, bring the lady or the little girl. Come here, honey. Now, this little girl, I'll take her hand. Come here, sweetie. I thought that's what it was. It's choked up sometimes, don't you? Can't get your breath. Her little asthma's awful bad, but God can heal. Don't you believe that? Lord Jesus, I pray that you will heal the child. No doubt, sister. Believe it. Go and believe now with all your heart. God, he is not made he can make anything well he wants to. Do you believe that? Do you believe you're healing it? Lord, say thank you, Lord. Hold on, Lord, just rejoice. Just a minute. They keep being a man coming up here. See. Here it is. Little fellow sitting there holding a little boy in his arms. You believe, sir? I'm a stranger to you. You believe God can reveal to me what you want? See, you touched him. I don't know you. But you're suffering with a trouble, a bone disease. That is right. Your little boy there's got it. Your little boy sitting next to him's got it. That's your little girl sitting next to that. Her is in her arms and she's cross-eyed. That's right, raise up your hand. Now, do you believe? Don't doubt. Have faith in God. Just don't doubt. Just believe. All things are possible for them to believe. What you weeping for, little lady, sitting out on the end with your handkerchief up to your face crying? You believe me to be his servant? You believe God can reveal to me what your trouble is? From here? You got a spiritual problem you're studying about, is that right? It's all going to clear up. It'll be all right. <laughs> that lady sitting next to you there, you just talked to her then. She's put her handkerchief up to her face. You believe God can tell me what's your trouble, sister? Will you believe me as his prophet, his servant? You will. All right. That sinus trouble's been bothering you. She'll go away from you if you'll believe it. Will you believe it? If you will, raise up your hand and say, I believe it. You want to eat your supper from that stomach trouble next to your lady and believe with all your heart, too? The next lady's got a spiritual problem there, and you got a rash, too, that's bothering you. you got a daughter's got a rash also, isn't that right? 
Yes, sir. She said, hey, you believe that? All right. You can be healed if you believe it. What about on this one? Here, see this little Mexican man sitting down here on the end looking right at me. You'll see that light hanging over him. The man is dark as above that. See what it is there around there? That is epilepsy. You believe God can heal you with epilepsy, sir? You do? All right. You do it. Say the little man next to you, that little Spanish man, he has a rupture. You believe God can heal your rupture, sir? You believe that with all your heart? You do? Next, he's got a stomach trouble. You nod your head there. You have stomach trouble. You believe God heals you? Then go eat your supper. Be over with it. Tell me what they're touching all the way across the audience. What is it? It's the manifestation of the Word of God. Do you believe it yourselves? Do you believe it? Where's some of them? Here, here, here's a man in the car. Sir, I don't know. You have never seen him. You believe, you believe what you've heard is the truth? You believe it with all your heart. If, if God could tell me here, uh, what's wrong with you? Would, would you? would you believe it? I'm going to tell you something now. And you know it's anyway. He's shattered to death. It's cancer. It's cancer. And you're a minister of the gospel. I see you standing in the corner. And I'm trying to And you're from out of town. Now you believe with all your heart. You believe with all your heart. One day you're going to die. See? You can't lose. This is where she heard the story in the Syrian with the seeds and the sitting there. They said, why don't we sit here until we die? If we sit here, we die. We're going to sit and die. Doctors don't know what he did. He can't let it be done. This is the answer to that. You only got one chance. They never said one chance. If they went out to the house of the enemy, if they saved them, they lived. If they didn't, they're still die anyhow. But you're not asked to the enemy's house. You're in the presence of your God. You're in charge of your Put your eyes up and take that cup and go home. Well, the rest of you believe the same thing. If you do, stand up on your feet. I'm asking those people who raise their hands that they wanted to be saved and won't accept Jesus Christ, I want you to come up here and stand here with me just a minute. Will you come now? Come up here, you that believe and want to accept Christ. You'll never be any closer to Him to be meeting visible. Remember, the word if I have preached, God has confirmed it to be the truth. Come on. Come up this way. Every one of you. Everyone that didn't know Christ, that raised your hands and come here. Say you were sinners and you want to be saved. Come here and stand for a minute for prayer. Will you do it? Will you come? While he's so close, you mean you could see here the word preached? See God turn around and say, that word is the truth. That's me. That's me. I'm standing here. The very God that's going to judge you and then hold back. Don't do it. You might cut yourself off forever. See? There's three of them standing here. There's about two dozen. Come right now. Will you? No. No song. You don't have to have a song. Christ is your song. Christ is your conviction. The Word is what tells him. That's right. Here comes two young men. Come right on out. You the sinner. Come right down here just a moment, will you? Right? While I just feel that, stop that prayer line for this purpose. Come right here now. Come right here. We'll get to the prayer line. Just, that's right. You ladies, come right on here, young ladies. Right in this day when these young folks are coming, in this great hour, when there's still teenagers on the rampage of immorality, these people are coming to here. I trust that God will make them such examples to the neighborhood where they see, well, see that Jesus Christ still saves the lost. Won't you come? Come right out where you're at. Move down here just a moment. That's right. God bless you, boys. That's good. Come right up. Just a minute. Come on. Come. Way back in the back. Some people way back. Raise up your hand. Won't you come on down now? I'm almost persuading you. I'm, the word is standing on the outside knocking, trying to get in. Lord, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open and come in, let me come in. I'll sup with you and he with me. Won't you come? Come right down now. Stand here. Look, the word has been preached. It's been proven. Christ is raised from the dead. Here he is doing just what he said he would do. Not connected with organizations, denominations to take into something. That's your choice. I want you to take Christ now. Come, won't you? Is there another? Is it, God bless you. That's right. Bring him right on up here. Brother, will you walk down here now? These will be members of your churches. Come down here. Come on. Somebody else. Right in the presence of Christ. I can just feel the Spirit just calling in my heart. Surely, if that's doing that in my heart, then somebody out there should be coming. Is there a backslider out there that should come? Come stand here. Will you do it? Some of you? Backslider? Will you come? That's right. God bless you. Come, that's, come right on down. Certainly. 
That's the way. Be a real man, real lady. God made you a lady. God made you a man. That's virtue. That's strength. Come now, won't you? I'm standing around here. That's right. That's right. God wants you in His divine presence. Remember, the very... Who's God going to judge the world by? Jesus Christ. Who is it promised to do this in the last days? To reveal Himself? Jesus Christ. It's not me. It's Christ. Christ is the one that you're revealing Himself. Humility like He was, coming out of nothing like He did, coming into us like He had. He's God. Now, each one of you ministers, get right down around these people right quick. Now, get right down among them here. Stand right around. We're going to pray for them. Someone else wants to come in this prayer. Just a moment. All right. These will be members of your churches, friends. These will be, you, you have to take them from here on. They see the Lord Jesus and His power of His resurrection. They're here to become members of your church. You baptize them in Christian baptism. Take them into your fellowship. They're yours now from here on. You're the caretaker at the end. Let us bow our heads, everyone. Each one Christian out there that's sincere, offer prayer for these people. And if these ministers want to take them into the room, before they can be instructed further, all right. Heavenly Father, this is the results of the meeting. Here come sinners, 15 or 20 of them, gathered around the altar, wanting to give their hearts to you. I pray, Father, that you'll receive them. In the name of Christ Jesus alone, I pray that you'll receive it. Give them to me. You're your heritage, Lord. Each person in here that's sick now, lay your hands on one another. Reach over and lay your hands on and start praying one for the other. Lay your hands on one another. Start 